Good morning. Welcome to day three of the Cumbria Way. Slept really well last night. Feeling fresh this morning. Probably look like crap, but I'm feeling good. Slept like a log last night. Not a sound, not a peep, didn't hear anything. Really, really nice and quiet last night. So, back on the trail. And we'll make our way into Borrowdale and then over Stake Pass and then into the Langdale Valley. It's going to be a lovely day, blue sky, sun's up. Yeah, it's going to be really not a good day on the trail today. So this is one section that's been on my mind this morning because last time I was here this was a raging torrent and it was a really dodgy section to cross last time we was on the Cumbria Way but as you can see today it's just a trickle but uh, yeah it was quite sketchy crossing this last time I know my pal videoed it so if I can find the footage I'll put it in and you can see what a difference it was to what it is today. Three Eagle Crags just come into view, which is this one in front of me. And then you've got Sergeant Crag behind it, so if you're doing the Wainwrights. And if you follow it all the way around, you've got Old Scarf up there, which uh, I did a video on uh, last winter. And that was actually my uh, final Wainwright Old Scarf. So the path that I'm actually on is the coast to coast path as well as the Cumbria Way path. So if you're doing the coast to coast, you go to the left of Eagle Crag and go up green up edge but obviously we're going to follow the Cumbria Way path which is to the right and continue on up the Barrowdale Valley I'm still making my way up the head of the valley. It's just basically a long windy path that follows the river. But what a stunning valley. Absolutely gorgeous views today. With all the surrounding mountains. So I'm gonna to get to the head of the valley and I think I'll stop for uh, 20 minutes or so. Take, take on some water and then prepare myself for going up over Stake Pass. Right, I've had a 20 minute break, took a bit of water on board. So it's time to leave the Borrowdale Valley and get into the Langdale Valley. But this lump behind me is standing in my way. Time to go up and over. I can't even see the path that goes up, but there must be one there somewhere. Right, let's get on with it. Let's get over it.
not that far off the top now but look how the path snakes all the way down all the way into the bottom of the valley that is one mad path but this is the way I've come all the way along and then around that corner you can actually see in the distance skiddo and skiddo little man so yesterday I was uh, behind here where skiddo house is right not that got, got that far to go now let's get to the top so that's the up bit done now for the down bit into the Langdale Valley So I'm in the Langdale Valley and I can't believe how quickly I've got here. Got a pack of stickle up there. And then over to my right, you've got the crinkle crags. I've been here so many times. My first ever wild camp was in the Langdale Valley. Uh, just up past Red Tarn. Not the one near Hell Valley, there's another Red Tarn up there. So I've only got three miles to go and it's 12 o'clock so I think what I'm going to do is go past Bayes Brown campsite and there's some shops at church style so I'm going to get myself there and I think I'm going to have some lunch and rethink my day. Just had to be done, it was right there in front of me. Right, a couple of minutes and we'll be at the shops. So I'm at the shops at uh, Chapel Style, which are there. I just got myself a drink and a sandwich. So it's only 20 past one. So do I go back to Bayes Brown and chill out for the rest of the afternoon? Or carry on to Coniston which is another 10 mile away so it'd make it another 23 mile day and it'd make it that I did the walk in four days not five hmm the forecast tomorrow is showers and the next day after that heavy rain so it does make sense to crack on and take advantage of the lovely sunshine or go back to Bayes Brown and put my feet up I'm going to eat my sandwich, have my drink and make a decision so we're off to Coniston then it's a bit of a no brainer really it's too early to put my feet up and I may as well take advantage of this sunshine I don't fancy hiking for the next two days in the pouring rain putting the tent up, taking the tent down so we'll get to Coniston I'll probably go to Old Hall campsite, pitch up there and then tomorrow will now be the last day and the forecast for tomorrow is showers but that could be anything but the day after it's giving heavy rain and I don't fancy uh, hiking across farmers fields and everything in heavy rain into Ulverston so, I'm going to crack on, got plenty of time, 
I've got another 10 miles in me. Just had a sandwich, a bottle of water, and a pucker sausage roll. Although the sausage roll wasn't that pucker to be honest. So I've just hit the lovely townhouse, well not so lovely, with all these trees that have come down. Look at all that behind me. All the storms that we've had over the past few winters, it's not like they can just dig a hole and replant them. Such a shame, such a beautiful spot and it looks so different now with all this. So I've just hit six mile, so I've only got four miles to go into Coniston. So I'm going to find a spot, I think I'm going to sit down and chill out for 20 minutes and then I'll get going again. Right, we live in a lovely town house. Let's get this last four miles done into Coniston. This is the uh, famous dog house that everyone films or has the picture with just before you get into Coniston. Yeah, it's a bit dark in here. I did watch uh, someone doing the Cumbria Way and they actually spent the night in here. It's not really somewhere I'd uh, fancy spending the night. Right. I'm literally just outside Coniston. So let's get to the campsite. So we've made it to the lovely town of Coniston. So I've just been in the shop, got a few bits and bobs. I'm gonna to head towards the campsite, which is just outside Coniston. Get myself checked in and find a pitch for the night. 22 miles done today. Yeah, definitely feeling it today. Right, let's get to the campsite. And get this tent up. So I've got pitched up at Old Hall campsite just outside Coniston. It's uh, £14 per night per person and it's cash only. And if you want to shower, it'll cost you 50p. I actually said I'd never stay here again because last time I was here it was just so busy and it was just really noisy until early hours in the morning but there's only about 12 other tents here and there's a few camper vans scattered about so I don't think it'll be too bad tonight I should get, uh, get a good night's sleep um, good day today, really enjoyed it uh, especially coming over uh, State Pass but I was feeling it towards the end um, the rucksack just felt heavier and heavier and I could feel it pulling on my shoulders so yeah I was I was glad to get into Coniston um, I've had to tally all the mileage up because the, my watch was set to Bayes Brown um, so I've reset it from Bayes Brown to Coniston um, so in all, I've, I've done just shy of 24 miles. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's a lot further than what I intended to do today when I set off from Hallows Farm this morning. But it means that 
I'll be finishing the Cumbria Way tomorrow and I've got 15 miles an hour left to do into Ulverston and I'll just, just take whatever the weather's going to throw at me tomorrow. I don't want to be out in it for two days, for you know, for another two days and that. So, so whatever the weather throws at me tomorrow, I know that every mile I do is a mile closer to Ulverston. So I'm just waiting for my tea to uh, rehydrate. So I'm on a chicken tikka, something to eat meal. And I thought I'd treat myself. I've got myself a bottle of uh, Koppenberg. So I'm going to eat my food, have my cider, and I shall see you all tomorrow on day four will be which will be the final day of the Cumbria Way. Cheers everyone. Oh that tastes good. Good morning and welcome to day four my final day on the Cumbria Way and I can't believe it's here already, even though it is a day early. So I've just left the campsite, just making my way along uh, Coniston Water. The campsite was actually quite quiet last night. Um, I didn't really hear much, so managed to get a good night's sleep. Feeling fresh again. Competed the, uh, the old feet. So yeah, raring to go again. We've got 15 miles to go into Ulverston a uh, couple of miles along the uh, water's edge and then we're going to go right and up to Beacon Tarn and I know once I get to Beacon Tarn it's 10 miles from there because Beacon Tarn is where I was planning to camp on the last night because I was wanting to do at least one wild camp on this, uh, on this trip so yeah I'm just going to enjoy the walk along the water it's a bit grey and overcast so it could be uh, in anticipation of what's to come but you never know I might get into Ulverston and some might come out right let's crack on let's get a few miles in So the path that goes alongside Coniston Water is quite long and it's quite undulating, quite rocky in places, plenty of tree roots to clamber over. So once you get to this point, if you're doing it in the other direction, as lovely as it is, you've still got a few miles to go. Right, Beacon Town next. So this is a famous beacon sign, or it is if you're doing the Cumbria Way. So this is where I intended to wild camp tonight. 
can actually see a tent over the other side. So it would have given me 10 miles tomorrow into Wolverston. So instead, I've now got 10 miles today into Wolverston. I'm always paranoid when walking through ferns like these, especially wearing shorts, that no ticks have jumped on me. They do say that all 30% of all ticks that are now tested have got Lyme disease, but they don't know if it's because they're doing more testing or whether Lyme disease is on the increase in the UK. So it's always safe to just check yourself over and get out the ferns. Make sure the little blighters aren't sucking your blood. What is it on the Cumbria Way with cows? We've got some little calves as well, which are on their own. I do hope the mothers don't think I'm going to harm them. Nice move, cows. Just a Cumbria Way walker. Nothing to see. That's it. You get yourself up there, back to your mum. Hello. Hello. Yep, you go up there. Cows on the Cumbria way and I can't get out the gate. Yeah, I can. Look at them all staring at me. <laughs> I suppose if you was in a field all day just eating grass and somebody walked through, you'd be like, hey, what are you doing? Can I come and see what you're doing? But they are a bit intimidating with the size of them. All right. I have got six miles to go. So this is kind of my last view and the first view if you're doing it the other way of the Coniston Fells, which is the way I've come. So this time, I've actually got to go right through the middle of them. Come real way cows again. They are actually sat on the path. But they don't seem to be bothered. Those ones aren't bothered. That's a load of geese behind me if you can hear them. How many people are starting the Cumbria Way this morning? The past 40 odd minutes and we're seeing about six or seven different groups. So good luck to them all. As you can see the rains haven't happened. Not yet anyway. But the wind has picked up and it has gone a little bit grey. But I've only got three miles to go, so I think I'm going to get this finished in the dry. The lovely and very well maintained St John's Church that everyone videos and photos. Definitely a marker on the Cumbria Way.
So I'm at that stage in the hike where physically I'm wanting to get to the end, get the rucksack off, get home, have a bath, have a shave. I'm even looking forward to spending tonight in my own bed. But mentally, it's been such an adventure. I've absolutely loved it and I don't want it to end. But with every hike that you start, there's always a finish and that finish is one mile away. Start finish of the Cumbria Way. The first Cumbria Way sign that I've seen. Perfect day on the Cumbria Way. What is going on with the weather at the moment? Let's get on with it, let's get over it. Cumbria Way adventure has finally come to an end. Four days from Carlisle to Ulverston. We've absolutely loved it. A day earlier than expected. Would I do it again? Yeah, 100%. And now that I've done it in both directions, which way would I prefer? To be honest with you, I don't think it really matters. It doesn't matter which way you go, you're gonna get some of the most spectacular scenery and views that the Lake District has got to offer. So if you've got any comments, any questions, get in the comments box below and I'll get back to you. Thanks again for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.